Hey guys, welcome back to Down and Dirty Modding. Today we are looking at vertical mount GPUs. Uh, as you can see here in my uh, Inwin 303, I've gone ahead and made a bracket that mounts that GPU and flips it out to where we can actually see the uh, the front side of it, the fans, all the all the cool stuff they put on there for us to look at that we never get to see in a standard case. Um, we're going to be making a bracket. Now there are two ways of doing this. One involves cutting and mounting a an aftermarket bracket in this little slot right here between the PCI bracket and the edge of the case. Uh, the only problem with that is that you're left with a hole uh, after you're done. Uh, so if you ever get rid of that case, that bracket has to go with the case because otherwise there's a big giant hole in the middle of it. Now a bracket will let you take it off and move it from case to case. So if you decide to change your case and the next case has the same number of PCI brackets, you can take your bracket that you've made swap it into this next one and have a vertical mount GPU again. So it's transferable between cases. So um, there are going to be a few differences from what I did on my 303 build here. Uh, that was kind of a learning experience with the bracket. Uh, it worked, but there's some things that uh, after doing it, I realized weren't the best way to go about it. But uh, we're going to be using our Fractal R4 here. We're going to give it a vertical GPU mount, GPU mount get this uh, 770 looking out so after we paint it and do some work on it we can kind of show it off a little better. What we'll need today as far as tools are some measuring devices, uh, taps, drill bits, uh, some hammers, a file, uh, safety glasses as always, a uh, drill, a uh, dremel, and a jigsaw. Now the jigsaw isn't exactly necessary but it does make cutting uh, this material a lot easier than trying to use a dremel on it. Uh, but a dremel will work fine if that's all you've got. Material-wise, we're going to be using some 5052 aluminum. Uh, this is 0.063 inches thick, which is about a mil and a half. Now, alloys for aluminum are kind of funny, and sometimes you have to pick the right one. This is 5052. Its properties are that it doesn't work so well on milling equipment, but it bends real easy. And instead of a lot of aluminums breaking when you bend them, they'll develop cracks and weaknesses in that break or in that bend. Uh, 5052 doesn't, it likes to stretch. So this is the best alloy for bending and manipulating the, the aluminum into brackets and stuff like that. So uh, we're using 0.063, but um, man, I can't remember the size. I think 0.05 would be one mil and 0.08 is two mil. Both of those would probably work one mil would probably be a little thin. Two mil is, is a little bit harder to work with. So the 1.5 kind of gives us the best of both worlds. It's not too thick, but it is still strong. So um, you can pick this up online at places like online, uh, what is it? Onlinemetals.com actually, I think, uh, and get just a 12 by 12 piece of it. I don't think it's that expensive, but uh, very handy when you're doing brackets and stuff in cases. So luckily I've got a scrap left over for, from another job that just happens to be the exact right width. I don't know how that worked, uh, but it's been kind of handy having it the exact width. So this is what we're gonna be using. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this GPU out, start doing some measurements and getting it laid out on our aluminum. And then we'll do some drilling and some cutting and some bending. Um, and hopefully after that, we'll have a bracket. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we need to do is measure out our height of the piece that we need to cut. Now, I'm uh, I'm lucky that I've already got a piece that matches that, but uh, you'll want to go ahead and stay below this. I've got an extra bracket up here, but stay on your PCI brackets and below your I.O. bracket, your I.O. shield, and you want to measure to the bottom of your I.O. brackets, and it's 150 millimeters right here is what it looks like. So, luckily my piece is already right at 150 millimeters, maybe a little long. Um, Next, you'll want to measure from the back of the case to the bend, and that's going to give us 21 millimeters. Maybe just a little bit shy. So we'll mark that. And then use a square to draw our line across there, and that's where our bend's going to be. Next, I want to use the factory edge from a square. Normally we just take this over to the vice start bending it, 
but we also want to mark out our holes and get those drilled while this piece is still flat. It's a whole lot easier to drill all these holes out while you don't have a bend to deal with. So what we're going to do is measure our first hole from the top. And we're going to call that six millimeters. And then we have to make sure we're going the right direction. Uh, this is the inside of my corner. And so the end will bend back to me. That makes this end the top. So I'm actually going to put a mark on here to remind myself that that's the top. So we'll start at six millimeters from the top. Put a mark. Wait, almost. I need to measure how far off the back of the case those holes are. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So 15 off of our edge is where our holes are going to be. And we'll use a square to mark that line across there as well. Okay. Now if we start with our six millimeters down from the top. Go ahead and put a mark there. Now we need to figure out the spacing between our holes. Um, and they're not quite dead on with any, anything in the world. Our first hole is about 21 millimeters, maybe 20 and a half. The second is 41 and a half. So let's go ahead and mark those two out. 20 and a half, 41 and a half, I should have one more, actually no, there's no bracket down at the bottom, so uh, that should take care of the holes that we need to drill to allow this bracket to be screwed in. Um, theoretically, you can skip some of these and not put all of them in, but I'm going to go ahead and drill them all out. Uh, I don't like having things flop around, so so I'm just going to go ahead and go crazy with it. So we're going to drill those out. First, we're going to mark all the holes and punch them. And what this does is keeps my drill from sliding around whenever I'm trying to drill it out. drill and we're going to start out with a 16th inch high speed twist bit followed up by a 5 30 seconds bit. The 16th will give me a good starting hole and uh, lets me be more precise with my original hole. Uh, following that with the 5 30 seconds that 5 30 seconds is big enough for a 632 screw to go through or the thumb screw that you're going to have fitting into that. Uh, we do need glasses in case something flies around. I'm going to slide this just off the edge. Um, normally you'd want to put this on uh, a workbench or something so you don't drill into your table. I'm going to slide it off the edge so I don't damage my table. All right, now this is the point where we talk about my blatant disregard for safety with power tools. Uh, I know it looks like um, I use everything kind of haphazardly and I guess I kind of do. That comes from years of experience of working with much, much bigger tools than these and not that I don't think these couldn't hurt me. Uh, any power tool is capable of slicing off a finger, putting a hole in your hand, doing all sorts of bad things. And I've learned that over the years. Um, so take every safety precaution you can. Uh, I tend to be overconfident with my abilities. Um, and one day that's going to come and bite me in the ass. And I know that and I'm comfortable with that. So uh, I've made peace with it. I don't want you all to end up in the same boat that I'm going to wind up in some days. So always wear gloves, wear your eye goggles and your uh, eye protection and and realize that even though some of these are smaller tools that don't seem like they can hurt you, they always can. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, so we've got our bin marked and our holes drilled out. We're going to measure the distance that goes back to our motherboard tray 
in those slots because we're going to have to make slots that slide into those. So we want to measure to our motherboard tray and then add on some distance. If you're using a, a standard metal motherboard, um, uh, like from the steel case, uh, those don't have to be real deep. I've got a 3 8 inch uh, motherboard tray, so I can make mine pretty deep. I'm not going to, but I can. So uh, what I'm going to do is measure to the tray from my bend, or from the tray to the bend, and that is 115 millimeters. So it'll be 115 millimeters, then the bend, the inside of the bend. So I can come off this line that I marked for my bend, 115 millimeters, make a mark. And I'm gonna put a line there and square it up as well. Because this will be the inside of our tabs. And then you just add on Oh, however far you want to go through your motherboard tray. So if you're going through steel, a couple of millimeters is probably going to be okay. I've got three eighths of an inch to play with, so I'm going to go, uh, I don't know. Honestly, I haven't even thought about it. I've got three eighths, and I'm probably going to go uh, five millimeters past. We'll keep it in millimeters, you know. Keep our things straight. Because life's that easy, right? So we're going five millimeters past tabs. Go ahead and make a line there with our straight edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut this on that last line. So I've got my tabs built in and all that. Bend it and then I'm going to hold it up and then mark my uh, tabs out with the piece there. Uh, I could try to measure them. I don't trust myself enough to have everything correct. Um, that's just the way I am. So I like having that held up and okay, that's gonna be right and then marking them out. So we're gonna go uh, cut this out with a jigsaw, jump over on the vise and do a little bending with a vise and a hammer. So that'll be a fun part. So I'm gonna cut this out and then we'll see you on the vise. All right, so we got our piece cut out. We went ahead and took a file and filed the rough edges and also the backs of our, our holes that we drilled through to make sure it sits in the vise nice. What we want to do, slide this into our vise, up to our bend line, and make sure we keep that very straight as we put it and close the vise. Because where that jaw sits, that's where our bend's gonna happen. That's gonna be the inside of our bend. And we want that to be as, as perfect as we possibly can. Now we're going to take a hammer. And this is just a rubber mallet, which should work. Sometimes you have to use a ball peen, but that does dent the uh, aluminum because it's soft. Uh, so if we can get by with the rubber mallet, we're going to try. We're just going to tap the back. So a little bit of pressure. I, I am giving a little pressure pulling this forward. Not enough to bend it just by hand, but... Uh, I'm giving it that pressure and that basically the hammer is just kind of jarring it and letting it go. So, just tap across the back. And slowly bend it. want to bend it until it's 90 degrees or really close and I think I'm going to have to get a ball peen to uh, flatten out our bend a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Uh, the bad thing about a ball peen is it does leave dents and marks, uh, but a lot of times you can sand that right out pretty easy. So. This should be a nice little bend. So we're good. We're going to go slide this into our case, figure out where we need to cut our tabs out, cut those tabs out, and uh, we're almost home. So now we can slide this in here. Aha! Uh -huh. That works, and we're going to actually have to raise this up because we're hitting the IO shield. 
Actually, I guess I can go over the IO shield. Screw that thing. Perfect. Mostly perfect. All right, so now we've got to figure out how to mark our tabs. And what we're going to have to do is pull this motherboard tray out to actually see them. So I'll pull that out real quick if I find a driver. So with that pulled out, we can slide our piece in where we want it. And it does hang over that IO shield hair. I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but I'll figure that out when I, when I get to it. I can actually probably... Cut the top of this down and file this top edge down a little bit. Next, I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's take a jigsaw or a dremel and, and trim this back piece by this IO shield just to give us some working room. Now I'm also, while I'm here, going to mark my tabs out because I think I've got this in the right spot. So, um, I'm going to mark the spots where I need to cut this out. And hopefully what we'll be left with are tabs that slide into our tabs on the back. And a good idea is when you're marking this out to go in and color red the spots you want to actually cut out. You know, just do a little scribble inside of it. And that way you know that's the piece you want to cut. And that's the part. So we've, we've marked our spots where we're cutting out and which parts to actually cut out. Uh, unfortunately, my 5 millimeters that I'm cutting out is marked on the other side of this, but it's easy enough to mark it on this side as well. We just need to mark out 5 millimeters. And then take our square. Give myself a line through there. Then we can start the fun process of figuring out how to cut these tabs out. Which isn't horrible, but it is a little bit of work. And to cut them out, what you're going to wind up doing, and I'm trimming the top edge too, I can't forget that. Just around the IO shield though. Um, you can either clamp this down, take a jigsaw, and uh, work in on those edges a little bit at a time. Uh, Dremel will also work, but basically, you're kind of stuck with eating out the material, then going back with a file and cleaning it up with the file uh, for, your, for your fine detail work. And uh, I wish there was a better way of doing it, but that's what it comes down to. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. But I'm going to use a bandsaw, so I'll be right back. After I get my glasses. All right, so we got that done, and unfortunately, even having a bandsaw doesn't keep you from having to use a file. So now we've got to go back in, clean up all our edges, 
and we'll make sure that this fits in the case. Alright, now we're going to see if she fits. guys um as far as filing this thing down i mean it doesn't have to be perfect because it is going to be hidden but you do kind of want to put some effort into it because you want it to be kind of clean uh i mean that's that's the worst part of case filing is doing it halfway and then you've got this nice mod that has all these little unfinished edges and stuff uh they they no matter how much you think they won't stand out they do um so now we've got a bracket made uh, we're ready for the last two steps. One of them is going to be going in and we are going to have to remove our dividers on our PCI bracket. Uh, and we'll just basically take a Dremel and go in here and just whack these suckers off uh, on either side uh, and get rid of them, file them down. And then we need to figure out our GPU mount, which it's sort of interesting. I, I did toy around with uh, having the, the tab that mounts the GPU, uh, usually on this side, sitting on top of this bracket, but I've realized that that kind of interferes with a lot of air cooling. So we're actually going to move it out and down as much as we can, um, keeping in mind where our power supply is going to be and keeping in mind what sort of, of cooling we're doing on our CPU so we can try to avoid all that. So um, I guess the first thing we're going to do is Put a couple of screws in this to make sure we're mounted in our right spot. If I can find a couple of screws. What well, I like when that happens, it actually fits. But now what we're going to do is throw our GP or throw our motherboard back in pull our GPU up and try to get an idea of how we want to cut this out. So, let's go the motherboard with a couple of screws. Like I said, just a couple of screws would be plenty. Um, you don't need it to be permanent right now. take our GPU, hold it up in here, eyeball kind of where we want to set it. Um, we want to be able to keep these tabs on that bracket because we're going to use those as mounting points as well. Uh, but we want, to, we want to get it down a little bit in case we have a bigger air cooler on here. So probably, I think right there. So I'm going to take a pin. mark the angle on this bracket and that's going to be the top that's going to be as high as we put it so that'll look pretty good now the, the key on these brackets to doing it like that and I probably I'll measure the end of it as well make sure I get it in the right spot developed a little method with them where basically you cut a tab, you bend that tab out, uh, whack it off on the back, and, uh, and your GPU will slip in there. It's, it's kind of dirty and cheap and easy, but it works very well. Uh, so I'm sticking with it. And it also works well because we've got this thicker aluminum that gives us some, some strength when, it, when it, uh, you put that GPU on there to hold it. So we'll take this back out. Yeah, I think those are just going in a little crooked and cross-threading them. Take our 
back it out. Which may have to cut the motherboard may have to cut out. Nope. It's real real tight in there, and those rivets on this bracket are holding it close. But now we've got a line on the top on our where the top of our GPU is gonna be. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a hole that basically goes around all our displays. So we need to measure down past our DVIs and then how wide we want that. And if I can find my measuring device. What did I do with it? Take a square and we're gonna line up our mark here for the top of our GPU. And the nice thing about doing it like this is it works really good for this bracket, but if you also replace one of these panels and you want to mount a GPU to it, this works exactly the same. So we've got our top, um, we're gonna measure our width, and we want to leave a little bit on the edges here, so basically we just want to get past our, our outputs um, because we do want to have something resting on there. So 36. Yeah, 36. So 36 wide. We'll use our mark we made for the edge of our card as a starting point. 36 millimeters, put a mark there, and we'll go ahead and square that out, give us some lines. And now what we need to do is measure our depth of this hole that we're going to make. So we'll just start our, our angle on our bracket, get past our DVIs. Uh, we're going to call that uh, 105. 105. Not 150. 105. Let's see if I can not mess this one up again. 105. Once again, we're going to take our square. Give us shows the line. What we're going to do is we're going to drill two holes. To get our jigsaw in, or you can use a Dremel as well, and we're going to cut this three sides. We're going to leave the top alone, but we'll cut uh, the bottom and up to this line up here, and the same on this other side. That will allow us to put this back in the vise, bend this piece out, and that becomes the bracket that holds our GPU. So I'm going to drill a couple of 3 8 holes to get my jigsaw in there, and then I'll wall around a nice little spot with the jigsaw, and uh, we'll get this tab bent out. All right, now once we've got this cut out, we'll slide it into our vise and line up our line that we drew on the other side that gives us the, where we want our bend. And do like before, make sure we get it nice and straight, exactly where we want it. And tighten the vise down. And then we are going to bend it uh, forward towards these, this, this bend in the bracket. Uh, I don't want to go the other way because then, then we'll go inside the case. So we're going to have to use the ball peen on this one. But we're going to do just like we did last time. Give it a little pressure and tap on it. And we should get it to bend out. Yeah, we want to get a nice 90 degree bend on it, and I think we've got it right there. So we should wind up with something like this. Now we're going to go in and cut this off 
uh, probably about an inch. I'll measure the bracket on the uh, GPU, but we're going to cut this off so it doesn't stick out past our bracket. So uh, let's go ahead and head back over to the table. All right, so now we're going to take our GPU, measure the length of our bracket, uh, which is about 15, nope, about 12 millimeters or so. And we're just going to measure that on here, and then we'll chop that off with the uh, Dremel tool. This part of it gets a little funny because you're working on a bend. A lot of it has to be kind of held up and, and measured by hand with whatever's there so you don't have, uh, you know, this cut's not the easiest and also drilling a hole for our bracket isn't the easiest because uh, I just haven't figured out the exact measurement I need for uh, putting that in beforehand. So uh, we're going to take our Dremel now. our glasses and we're going to go ahead and cut the end of this sucker off. should wind up with something like that. Now what's going to happen is we're going to slide our GPU bracket into this hole and our, our angle of the bracket is going to sit up against this. So let's take a file and kind of clean these edges up real quick. I think I cut that kind of crooked. I know I cut that kind of crooked. So let's grab our file. Man, I'm making a mess. And clean that up a bit. All right, so now it's time to try to fit our GPU and we'll get our holes figured out as far as our mounting. So when this all goes together, it's a bit weird. This little tab on the bottom here is gonna throw you off. So you kind of have to feed it in and then twist the GPU. You'll see it mounts right up. Everything should just stick out on the other side. We cut her a little bit close. Our DVIs don't have a lot of clearance, but they have plenty, plenty for what we need. So. We're going to make sure this is in here tight, where we want it. And I'm going to mark this mounting hole on our GPU, or on our bracket here, uh, where we want to have our screw location. Uh, what I'm also going to do is mark off a little bit more of this tab to cut off with the Dremel tool because uh, it doesn't need to stick out that far. It sticks out uh, three or four millimeters past where it needs to go. So uh, now that we've got that marked out, we can drill a hole. And like I said, this hole is a real pain to drill uh, because it's at a weird angle. Um, it won't come out perfectly straight once you uh, thread it out. So you just kind of have to go with it, unfortunately. Uh, one of these days I'll figure out the exact measurement on all of it, but uh, so far I haven't really worried about it too much. And everything's worked fine. So let's get our... And this is going to be tapped. So this is the drill size for a 632 screw before we tap it. Now all that's left is a couple of holes on our GPU that are going to mount down here at the bottom and that's going to hold our GPU tight. And then we should be able to pull our protective coating off, stick it on there, see how it fits, and then I'll be ready to paint. So uh, we do want to take our GPU, and make sure we don't have any metal floating around over here. Because what we're going to do is pull this bracket off on the back. And what you'll need usually is a uh, some sort of nut driver or wrench to get these DVIs loose, and then a screwdriver to take the screws out. These DVI screws just screw right out. I 
Now there usually be a couple of screws across here and then also on the bottom. I might need a smaller screwdriver. No, this screwdriver is going to work. It's a little big, but it works. Yeah, get off there. that taken off we're gonna drill wow that thing cooked at some point uh, we're gonna drill two holes down here in these little tabs um, now it won't affect it if you move this GPU to a different case uh, it's not really structural that just slides into the tabs um, and then also if you want to change your GPU out and put a different GPU in you can put that GPU's bracket in here and we're gonna have some holes mounted on this uh, bracket you can mark them out and redrill these holes out. So we're just going to put a couple of marks where I want them. Use our punch so our holes are right. And then we'll go back with our 5.30 seconds bit that we used for the other 6.32 holes. Take our file and kind of clean that up a bit, and then we'll mark this and transpose it over to our bracket. So, what we want to do when we do this, we'll go ahead and slip this in here like we were mounting it up with our GPU. I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in this top piece because I want it to be where it's going to be. I want to put all this, kind of put all this together and then wind up being off by a hair. So we'll drop a screw in there. So we're going to go ahead and mark these two holes out back here. Actually, I'm just going to take and punch them. And then I can unscrew this bracket. I'm going to go ahead and drill these out and tap these with 632 screws. And before I mount that bracket back on my GPU, I want to put all this together and check it out to make sure it's all going to work out right. So we're going to grab a couple more screws and make sure it all fits. All right, so that's what it's going to look like from the back. We'll go ahead and get our GPU put on this, and then we can see what it looks like in the case. So I can take my glasses off so I can actually see again. That's always the tricky part, because like I say, you've got to kind of put it in and then twist it to get this tab in there to sit right. But that slides right in. This will be a 632. Is what we... Uh, Threaded everything for. because I want this to sit <laughs> to all the holes. God dang it. All the holes to sit right. So um, let's go ahead. OK. 
kind of a pain just because there's so much case in the way of actually getting this screw started. I'm just having a hard time with that. Ooh. Oh my god. So that's three screws that I've got to go chase on the floor now. That's awesome. And if we flip this thing over a little bit, it'd be easier for us. Oh. That way we can actually see what we're trying to screw that screw into. Oh yeah, tons better. So I'm thinking I might have to grab an Allen wrench to actually get this started. Or nope, there it went, just had to be able to look at it. We'll tighten that down and we'll tighten our other two down. We got a nice solid connection. And there we go. We've got ourselves a nice vertical mounted GPU. The access on the back is still nice and good. Um, now, when we get into stuff like this, every case is a bit different. I know my in-wind didn't actually have the bracket dividers in there, so that made, made doing a bracket to that case super, super easy. Uh, and almost a no-brainer just for, I mean, you didn't have to cut on the case or anything to uh, add that bracket, so. Um, but all in all, compared to the other ways of doing it, this is a lot less violation of the case. Uh, so after you're said and done, if you take this out, the case is still going to be less destroyed. Um, not that it'd be a big destruction of cutting this edge out, but less of the case is actually missing and, and taken apart. So this is one way of doing it. And like I say, plus I could take this out, put it in any other case and keep that single GPU, that vertical GPU mount and, and roll from case to case with it and it should work every time. Uh, right now, all we've got left to do really is to scratch it up and paint it, um, but I'm gonna wait till I do the case to do that. Um, a big consideration that I found out while working on my in-wind was that if you run an air cooler, you definitely wanna take and have your cooler on here while figuring out how you're going to lay your GPU out. Um, I unfortunately was on an AM4 layout. The cooler only went one direction and would not turn and it was uh, vertical. And basically once I got my GPU mounted up, I put the motherboard in with the cooler on it and found out that they hit each other. So uh, I had to do some modifications to the cooler to make it work. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you have a way of moving that cooler around uh, if it if it is going to interact with that GPU water cooling this won't even be an issue um, So all that's left now to actually finish that would be to get a, uh, a riser cable for it uh, something from like Lee he uh, I'm not really sure what length you'd have to measure probably like a 250 millimeter uh, should do it, but then we can put a riser from our board onto our GPU and we're all set and ready to go so hopefully that's giving you all a possible mod to do on your cases. Um, I know that's a popular thing right now is this vertical GPUs and, and I really like it because you get to see the, the hardware. I mean, that's what, what all this case modification is about, you know, using cool hardware and getting to see it. So um, I think this is awesome to be able to be able to turn it and make it work like that and be pretty easy and also that it transfers from case to case. So. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section, and um, hopefully I'll be able to get back to you as soon as I can, and that's all I've got for today, so take it easy, guys.